Today, we're looking at a blue black ink by KWZ, their Iron Gall Blue Black. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. There's timestamps down below so that you can skip around, but if you got the time, I would appreciate if you check out the entire video. Also, if you're interested, you can check me out over on Instagram. And if you're new here and like fountain pen inks, I would invite you to subscribe. To make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I then put the ink into this Visconti Van Gogh with a medium nib, use it to write for a day, and to take my notes for this video. I use three papers to standardize in some of my writing samples, Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. There are additional writing samples that'll come later in the video. Now, let's look at the writing sample. I picked this ink up in sample form, so it came in a vial like this. And to keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 is no feather spread, halo sheen. It does offer some shading. The extra fine is quite a bit darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen or shade, eight seconds to dry. Medium is a little darker than the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade and 13 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both shows no color variation and we didn't get it. Tomoy River, no bleeding, normal Tomoy River ghosting. The 1.1 is no feather spread, halo sheen, spots of shading going on. The extra fine is darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 14 seconds to dry. Medium is a little darker than the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, and 19 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation, and we're not getting it in the writing. And then we get Erodia. With no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1, no feather spread, halo sheen, some decent shading going on here. I like how it shades in the stub for a blue-black, and I wish it did it in the other writing. Unfortunate. The extra fine is a little bit lighter, it looks, than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 10 seconds to dry. Medium, by far the darkest tone on the page, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 14 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show no color variation, and we're not getting any. I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done in the way it's supposed to be done. We put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see the blue of our blue black push up. We see the gray that becomes into the black. But we also see what we've come to, to notice with the KWZ Iron Gall inks, which is this sort of pale color that comes through at the top. It's like an off-white, but it's there. The one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. And what we see is the blue is really getting into the bottom line, not as much of it is pushing up. There's just as much of that gray blackish tone pushing up. It's especially noticeable on the right side. Now this one, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into it. Now this one, I let dry for 24 hours before I dunk it into water. We see that that blue is almost all fixed into the bottom. We see that some of that blackish gray is still pushing up, but we still really see that kind of pale color. I don't know how else to describe it. Uh, a very pale color that's pushing its way up. This one that I let dry for 72 hours, that almost all of that blue is staying, almost all of that grayish black is staying. We do see some of both of those move up, but we still very clearly see that pale color that I think has something to do with what they're using for their iron gall. Resistance tests are done to see how well this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. Now, I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, I'm a bit surprised by the actions of the uppercase H. The just the way it's responding, it's not that it's unreadable, the lowercase h being a bit blurry. I might be willing to use this in a note-taking situation if I was going to highlight. I just think there's some better inks to choose. Now, water's only lifting some of the absolute darkest parts of this ink off. It's not really doing a whole lot, although water is all that I use to get this out of my pen. 
the pen flush, it's you see it down and to the left a little bit. It is starting to break up all of the ink on this. You are starting to see some of that gray and the beginnings of the white of the paper coming through. The one-third bleach solution completely removes this from the paper, although you're not going to need it to get it out of your pen. I test ink viscosity or flow by using a tilt test, and I've linked that video and put that in here for you. Now for the inks I've tested, I have found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. KWZ's Iron Gall Blue Black has a viscosity of 2.25, making it normal. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done on Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. I average all of those. Now for the inks I've tested, I've found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. KWZ's Iron Gold Blue Black has an average dry time of 13 seconds, making it right on the edge, but normal. Instead of finding inks that look like KWZ's Iron Gold Blue Black, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. So I went for a nice magenta, and I chose Robert Oster's Australian Shiraz. The second writing sample is done on black and red, Franklin Christoph, and Limon paper. Here we're looking at black and red notebooks. Now we get no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feathers spread, halo sheen, spots of shading throughout, little pepperings of darker letters. The extra fine is darker than the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 5 seconds to dry. Medium, by far the darkest on the page. No feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 7 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show no color variation, and we didn't get any. Franklin Kristoff. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 had no feather spread, halo sheen, spots of shading going on. The extra fine is darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, 4 seconds to dry. The medium is by far the darkest tone on the page with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 7 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation and we're not getting any. And last up, Limon paper. Well, we get a lot of bleeding. A lot of ghosting. This is not a paper known for how fantastic it does. Not nearly as bad with the extra fine. It does not touch the page underneath, but you cannot use the back of the page. The 1.1 has some feathering that's occurring. Tiny featherings. You see it on a Z and you see it on the L. It's there. No, no spread, no halo, no sheen. It had spots of shading throughout. Little pepperings of it. It's not too, too bad. The extra fine is darker than the stub with no feather. Nope, my bad. Well, I'm trying to look because I put my fingers in the same spot. We get feathering on the Y. We get it on the word the. We get it on the K of quick. So we do get some feathering, the Q of quick. We do get tiny feathers that occur in here, but they're not horrible and earth shattering. Five seconds to dry. Medium is much darker than everything else on the page. Yes, it feathers all over it. Tiny feathers all over it. It does have spread to about a broad from a medium. It has no halo, no sheen, no shade, and it took nine seconds to dry for bad performance. The scrubby for both show us no color variation, and we didn't get any, and that is all that I have for the writing samples. So what do I think of KWZ's Iron Gall Blue Black? This is a very black Blue black, which doesn't appeal to me, but it doesn't mean that it's bad. It is well behaved, it's well performing, but it is much too dark for me to enjoy as a blue black ink. So, what nib and pen are going to give the best writing experience with this ink? It was only in a dry stub where I could get a very nice tone with some shading. In every other pen that I use, even dry fines, I found that I got a very black line. If you've enjoyed this video and made it this far, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down and tell me why. Thanks for watching.